The question we want to know is what is dark matter and how exactly do we go about finding it? Stephen and I conducted an interview with Jeff Grube of Veritas and the Outer Planetarium learning about his methods for searching for dark matter. Really, it's called dark matter. We don't know what it is. We only study it because of its what we think is the effect of dark matter on the rest of the universe. So um, we see things that are just not explained by normal matter that gives off light. There's three ways that you can try to look for interactions. You have a, um, an interaction of two standard model particles. So what um, these accelerators do is they ram together particles um, at very high energies and you can create all the products from that collision. Um, so one of the ideas is you have normal standard model particles and in their collisions dark matter will be created. So that's one way you can look with CERN. The arrow moving to the left explains what CERN is looking for. In an interview with Dr. Stephen Kordz of Fermilab, we learned about a test to detect WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles. This test uses a large vat of argon, a noble gas, and keeps it stable under a giant mountain in Italy. When and if there is ever a WIMP passing through that interacts with an argon atom, they can detect its slight movement, causing an ionization of neighboring argon atoms. The tests are done underground to shield from cosmic rays. But if you're looking for very sensitive interactions, that um, those cosmic rays will completely um, swamp what you're looking for. So if you go deep underground, not very many particles from space can make it all the way to, um, you know, half a mile down under the ground. There's a test in South Dakota called Lux, which has recently published data stating that they have not had any positive interactions of dark matter yet. Though this may seem frustrating, it is actually exciting since it shows that their systems are capable of very accurate detections. Not having any positive detections makes it so we can decrease the possibilities of what dark matter is and if it can be a standard particle. And then finally, the third technique is what I work on, which is indirect detection of dark matter. So those two ways you're looking for collisions of dark matter with normal material. If you, again, turn around the Feynman diagram or the way that collisions work, um, you would have two dark matter particles colliding with themselves, so it's called self-annihilation. And in this self-annihilation, um, you can have um, then standard model particles come out, and those eventually decay into gamma rays, so into light, um, but high energy light. So gamma rays are just normal light, but with very high energy, um, and you can see those with telescopes. The project I work on, Veritas, um, we're looking, uh, we look for in space for gamma rays. There's four telescopes um, in an array, and what they do is they detect gamma rays. So, um, which seems impossible because they're located on the ground, but gamma rays from space don't reach us on the ground. These telescopes actually look at when the gamma ray is blocked by our atmosphere when we're protected. Um, when it first hits the atmosphere, then instead of just disappearing, um, the gamma ray has enough energy that it actually causes a chain reaction of all these particle interactions and a shower of particle uh, rains down through the atmosphere. That give off light as well. Uh, it's called Cherenkov light. And it's pretty cool because when those particles are traveling, they're traveling so fast through our atmosphere that they're actually going faster than the speed of light in our atmosphere. So there's an absolute speed limit and nothing can go faster than the speed of light in a vacuum. But once you've got stuff, light is slowed down. So example, it's slowed down quite a lot going through water. Um, our air is much less dense than water, but it's still slowed down. So these particles are going so fast, they're traveling at near the speed of light in the vacuum, that they're actually going faster than the speed of light in air. And that causes Cherenkov radiation um, as the air is basically being depolarized. So it's pretty cool. Um, it gives off this uh, glow. We see that up in the atmosphere, and our telescopes are detecting that. So they're detecting what happened 
when this gamma ray first hit the atmosphere. So it's a very, you have to reconstruct and get back to the original gamma ray. Once you do that, then you follow that gamma ray backwards and we're looking for regions where we expect more dark matter to be clustered.